Hi, good evening all. I am happy to be here and I hope you can hear me very well. Uh, of course, as always, please let me know in the chat section uh, to make sure that you can hear me. Hi, Dr. Jan, how Hello. are you? Hope good you can evening. hear me. Good we evening. We are fine given the circumstances here in Spain. But, uh, that is true. Uh, that is true. Le let's say uh, everything uh, more or less under control. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you for being with us today. And uh, of course, let me just simply, um, you know, remind you about why we are here. So uh, you might already know that uh, starting from April 1st, we are meeting here every single day, actually twice a day with all top fertility experts who simply share their expertise, explain details on various IVF matters, to simply give you a chance to find out what can be done in your specific situation, but also uh, provide you with the answers while you're uh, waiting until you will be actually able to start your IVF treatment because we all know that nowadays is simply not uh, possible. Okay. And also, I wanted to uh, remind you that Stronger Together initiative has been uh, created so that we can all get together and support each other through these uh, uncertain times for sure for all of us. Okay. And also, Stronger Together uh, has been brought to you thanks also to our partners uh, that uh, are uh, as follows. It's Donor Conception Network, National Fertility Society, Fertility Clinics Abroad, EggDonationFriends.com, and WhereIVF.com. And you already can see with us today, we have a very special guest, uh, the founder and president of IVF Spain uh, Clinic, uh, located in Alicante, Dr. Jan Ice Puru, Purua. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it is a great pleasure to have you here, Dr. Jan. And uh, he will start with a short introduction on our topic on oocyte quality. And then uh, we will tackle all the most common questions that we receive from the patients. But then it will be time for your questions. So you know what to do. You will need to type them all in the chat section and we will um, show all of those questions on, uh, on the screen and Dr. Jan will be able to answer them. I can see that we have uh, someone from Switzerland, Colombia, South America, right? Hello to all of you. Uh, so, I, okay, even India, happy to, to have you here, really. And uh, I believe we can begin. Dr. Jan, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. It is Perfect. my pleasure. Uh, so this is a, such a big topic. Uh, I, I I would like to start uh, 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 defining uh, uh, the the, the uh, unique uh, uh, shape of of all sites uh, uh, among all other uh, somatic and uh, germinal cells. Uh, the egg, the oocyte, is the most complex uh, cell in the human body. It is also the biggest in size. Uh, it's the only one that can be seen uh, with blank eyes. This is like uh, one-tenth of one millimeter, so you don't need uh, a, a microscope to see an oocyte. This uh, is the unique cell in the human body that uh, we can see, obviously, if you have good eyes. Otherwise, you will need uh, glasses, as I uh, already need. But uh, this is this is an amazing area and an amazing topic because most of you already know that uh, in terms of uh, prediction of success of IVF treatments, the <clears throat> uh, female factor is the most relevant, and the oocyte as a singular cell is uh, the the most powerful. Uh, 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 predictive uh, factor in terms of quality and in terms of outcome of uh, the treatments. Um, having said that, uh, it's uh, as, as it is a, a very complex cell, it's also very difficult to to approach, and it's very difficult to to analyze and. Uh, I have honestly to admit that there is uh, 
very few uh, uh, work and scientific evidence on the crucial factors uh, of the viability of uh, egg cells. Uh, but in order to make it not mm, uh, very complex from the beginning, <clears throat> there is a statement which is um, uh, very, very massive and impressive. And this is uh, the most uh, relevant factor uh, related to the oocyte quality is the age of the oocyte. And this is really a, a, a take home message. Uh, I, I will possibly during your questions and uh, during this uh, event uh, remark uh, this uh, uh, several times. Uh, age is uh, uh, so relevant uh, in, 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 in terms of quality for, for the egg uh, because time uh, uh, is uh, uh, a crucial factor in the uh, uh, decrease of the ovarian reserve over the times. Uh, in the, in the uh, fertility uh, life of a, of a woman and obviously the older uh, the weaker the genetic background of the oocyte which will uh, later uh, uh, produce an euploides on the embryo and uh, embryos developing uh, 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 weakly and at the end implantation failures abortions and so the most relevant factor in uh, uh, reproductive uh, uh, technologies and then assisted reproduction technologies is the age of the uh, uh, ovary and the age of the oocytes uh, having said that uh, we can go on uh, uh, going into deeper details like uh, some of the questions that uh, attendants have uh, already formulated, uh, I would like to start uh, uh, with them in the order that uh, is given. And the first of them is uh, is very interesting question because uh, this is asking uh, if uh, we can assess the the oocyte quality before the fertilization. Okay, obviously. An oocyte is a very valuable uh, uh, cell. We cannot manipulate it. If we manipulate it, uh, we fall into the uh, uh, paradigm and the contradiction. Uh, once an egg is manipulated, we can't use it. So we we either know uh, about the, the, the deep insight into the molecular mechanisms of the oocytes and then uh, we uh, cannot uh, uh, follow up the development of the cell because possibly we need to, to kill the cell to know uh, the molecular mechanisms or we just uh, 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 see what not touching the, the cell what we can assess in order uh, to be able to use the cell and to have information of the follow-up of uh, uh, its uh, uh, biological uh, behavior. Uh, so this 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 uh, dilemma uh, uh, will always be there, and uh, this means all the information we have about the quality of eggs is uh, just a non-invasive, uh, 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 based on non-invasive uh, technologies and uh, uh, otherwise we would not be able to follow up the, the uh, development of this cell. And this is obviously a big restriction because we, we only can have indirect data. There are, this is true, uh, some attempts now with artificial intelligence and with big data to uh, screen the oocytes on different uh, uh, depth, uh, uh, depth uh, uh, three dimensionally, uh, taking uh, uh, pictures that are pixeled in a high resolution, and uh, which uh, data can then uh, obviously one 
in a way that is non-invasive and it preserves the viability of the cell and that gives us a lot of information that we can then cross to the information of the behavior of uh, of this oocyte when it is uh, fertilized and so on. And this is a very promising technology because uh, it could already uh, uh, get uh, identified that there are some structures that are even not visible to the human eye and are non visible also to, to advanced microscopes uh, that, uh, that, uh, that may use polar, polarized light or, or, or even uh, uh, fluorescence or, or whatever. Uh, but there are, there, are, there are data just taking pictures of the, of the cell that uh, that can predict if this cell will get fertilized uh, properly or not that if uh, the embryo resulting from this cell will uh, have a good or a bad chance to proceed to a blastocyst or even uh, if the clinical outcome of uh, of this embryo uh, will be uh, high or not uh, obviously this is all now uh, starting there there are just a couple of uh, scientific uh, works uh, uh, across this topic, uh, but it, this is uh, very promising. For sure, this is nothing we are using now routinely in the in the clinics, but I hope this is a technology that will be available in a couple of years. Uh, this is interesting only for countries where where uh, not uh, it is not allowed to fertilize all eggs. Yeah. <clears throat> like uh, former times in Switzerland or or in Germany or or other countries around the world, where there is a restriction of generating embryos for each cycle. Uh, in Germany, for example, they just fertilize the the eggs and then uh, freeze them in the pronuclear status before they have defined uh, this is an embryo or not. Uh, but uh, it is. In these cases, it would be very useful to have a tool that can predict if an egg is uh, competent or not. And uh, there we should rely on these artificial intelligence uh, tools that will come in in, uh, in the next uh, uh, years. And uh, as far as they are not ready, there are um, also some other uh, approaches like analyzing the follicular fluid of each uh, 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 oocyte or the cumulus cells that surround the oocyte inside the follicle that uh, after aspiration we uh, can uh, also assess uh, or, uh, under the microscope. There are uh, several works, scientific works uh, regarding this, analyzing these cumulus cells and the factors that they extrude in the follicular fluid um, in order to have like a, like a molecular fingerprint of this oocyte that will tell us if uh, it's a competent oocyte or not. And this, is, this has been done in France uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Also, there are some Canadian uh, uh, works uh, around this that uh, look very promising. Uh, but uh, just to, to conclude, yeah, uh, we should know uh, for most cases and in most can countries, it is not so interesting to check the uh, oocyte quality before fertilization because we will see the oocyte quality after fertilization in terms of embryo quality. This is the strongest factor. The oocyte quality contributes with more than 80% to the to the. Uh, embryo quality and it uh, drives and runs the uh, first three days of development up to eight cells until the embryo gets uh, autonomous, the so-called zygotic activation. After that, the embryo takes uh, uh, the control over the cell divisions itself, but before it's everything run by the oocyte. So this is why it's not so interesting to look at the oocyte and more at the embryo in countries where it is allowed. But knowing this and knowing the restrictions that uh, we have in molecular analysis of the oocytes, knowing that uh, we have this uh, uh, high uh, resolution image uh, technology ready and knowing that also indirectly the, the, the cumulus cells and the follicular fluid uh, can tell us something about the, the uh, biological competence of these cells, 
uh, it's for sure interesting of knowing this and in some countries it could be uh, uh, really a key to select those oocytes before fertilization that we would uh, preferently uh, uh, fertilize in order to generate by the first run and not just by chance the best possible embryos from this cycle. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you so much for explaining all the details on that particular question. I guess we can go ahead with the next question. And that will be, what is the relationship between age or size quality and, and unemployed rate? Yeah, yeah. So as I already mentioned in the introduction, this is the the strongest and the uh, uh, most re remarkable uh, relationship that uh, exists in in reproductive medicine. But I, I I want to go in deeper explanations because I want the the the, the patients and uh, and the people to understand why uh, this is so strictly and strongly related. Uh, and, uh, and and also which implications these have uh, for for the planning of treatments uh, there are there are there are studies all across the world and all ethnicities and all all uh, uh, thousands and thousands of 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 women uh, uh, with of different ages that went through treatments that provided at the end uh, blastocysts that uh, could get uh, analyzed for or PGTA or for PGS, as uh, it was uh, called uh, uh, former times, uh, where the relationship between age and aneuploidy of the embryo is uh, extremely related to the to the to the age of the woman. So they, they could discard the the age factor of the male. They could discard uh, a lot of factors regarding oocyte quality, morphology treatment uh, plans uh, uh, schedule so all 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 this stuff was absolutely irrelevant insignificant the only thing that correlated extremely strong with the anoploidy rate was the age of the oocyte the age of the woman at the time of the pickup in a way that even uh, comparing different ethnicities comparing different protocols always gave a very uh, low variability between cases uh, so that you can take for sure that if you are 35 um, almost 60 percent of your uh, blastocyst uh, uh, or something between 55 and 60 percent of your blastocyst will be an opioid if you are 40, this will be something about 65 to 70 percent. If you are 42, this will be something between uh, 75 and uh, 80. If you are 44, this will be something between uh, uh, 90 and 95. And this is like uh, a, a pill of wisdom. If you swallow this, if you realize this is really true, uh, the implications of that findings are uh, extreme because uh, uh, making uh, 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 RT treatments uh, without assessing the chromosomic uh, uh, competence of the embryos is like uh, uh, playing blind, yeah? like uh, 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 ignoring the, the strongest uh, factor of success. A nucleoid embryos, you know, in 90% of cases do not implant. So this is the, the, the strongest explanation for implantation failure. If they implant, they get uh, 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 miscarried or aborted in 90% uh, of cases. So this is also the strongest e explanation for uh, recurrent abortions. And even if they pass through these two filters, the 10% that uh, uh, still remain are Down syndrome cases and other uh, uh, very rare uh, aneuploidies that are compatible with life. And this, uh, this is also not uh, the, the first aim of uh, uh, reproductive treatments. And uh, knowing this, I think, uh, and since we have the, the, the uh, implantation genetic screening uh, uh, technology, uh, 
till now we always had to explain why we use this technology if we are not damaging unnecessarily the embryos but now there is so much evidence that the uh, damage to the embryos is uh, so ridiculously low compared to the benefits of testing them that we are now at uh, at the change of paradigms and uh, uh, possibly from now on, the question will be completely different. It will not be why should we perform PGS on embryos. The question should be much more why we do not perform PGS on embryos if the evidence is so high, if we can uh, even uh, 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 take advantages of shorter time to pregnancy, avoiding pregnancy, avoiding implantation failures, avoiding unnecessary uh, uh, transfers, avoiding losing more time, avoiding costs, avoiding uh, time uh, loss, and avoiding uh, uh, resources and energy and uh, psychological uh, parameters too. So this is why uh, I would remark uh, to this question as a short answer, uh, the relationship is, extremely uh, proven is extremely strong and the implications uh, of that findings uh, should be part of uh, our future practice mm -hmm. all right thank you so much for your for all the information with such details uh, i am sure it is very very uh, useful to know for all of us actually. And we have the next question up here. Can BMI index affect oocyte quality? <clears throat> uh, yes, as long as uh, BMI index is a, is a parameter that uh, uh, measures also metabolic competence of the body. Yeah, uh, people with extremely high BMI uh, uh, suffer from a lot of collateral uh, diseases and syndromes. This obviously affects also the oocytes. This can be measured uh, through uh, metabolic analysis and uh, through leptins in uh, in the blood. There's, uh, if they are high, uh, they affect the oocyte quality and also the implantation capabilities of the endometrium. You should know with a BMI higher than 28, the risk for a spontaneous abortion uh, is threefold as uh, uh, with a normal uh, BMI, which is a lot. Uh, but also in cases of very low uh, BMI indexes, uh, we all know that uh, that uh, uh, a professional uh, 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 sportswoman, for example, uh, miss their ovulations, yeah? and uh, uh, that anorexia is also linked to 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 a failure of ovulation. Uh, Obviously, uh, BMI as a parameter of uh, metabolic uh, uh, competence of the of the body is uh, strongly linked to all sites, quality and quantity. And thanks again for explaining this one. We have another one here. Is PRP ovarian rejuvenation something that could really affect all sites quality or and the number of all sites? Okay. Ovarian rejuvenation or regenerative medicine uh, is an approach that is uh, now starting in a couple of centers uh, all around the world, which uh, looks very, very promising, I have to admit. Uh, we are running in our clinic also a clinical study uh, regarding this. We don't have so... Uh, much experience yet, uh, but uh, relying on on what is uh, already published and uh, our own experience, uh, I am I am uh, uh, very positive to 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 these technologies. Uh, uh, and what we have seen so far is that uh, both, as well, the quality as. Uh, uh, also the, the quantity, the number of foresights can uh, uh, get improved. Obviously, this is uh, quite complicated technology that is not available uh, uh, elsewhere, but uh, exactly for the uh, age frame of, let's say, 42 to 45, I think there is, there is a place for these technologies. 
uh, because the the rejuvenation in terms of years uh, could contribute like uh, letting uh, ovaries of uh, 43 years behaving like ovaries of 41 which makes uh, absolute uh, relevant uh, difference and those of 45 behave like uh, 43 where the difference is not so big but also could be useful this applies obviously for for women with a also with a younger age and a very low ovarian reserve and uh, this applies for all women that uh, have uh, difficulties in in admitting uh, uh, the donation of gametes as an alternative yeah in those cases i think this is a very promising technology and uh, we will follow up it with rigorously with uh, a scientific approach and uh, clinical studies that hopefully will give us uh, more evidence in the next uh, years. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And so you already explained this to us, but are there any other regenerative medicine therapies, like techniques or procedures, supplements that may have impact on oocyte quality? Uh, other regenerative uh, medicine therapies yes there are there are there are uh, stem cell uh, research for example taking uh, part of the ovaries uh, capsule where we know that in a in a in a very low concentration but uh, where we know that there are uh, some uh, uh, ovarian stem cells sitting that are capable of generating new follicles. They have the capability of uh, generating uh, uh, germinal cells and create uh, 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 new follicles and new eggs. So this is this is another approach which is even uh, much less uh, uh, studied than than the other one with PRPs that we mentioned. There are others which are a little bit easier that also rely on the presence of uh, stem cells, but uh, uh, thereby worn from the bone marrow. Therefore, you would need uh, an aspiration of your bone marrow, the isolation of uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, cells that get then uh, cultivated that are not the same as uh, ovarian stem cells, but mm, that are closely related. And that could then, if uh, injected back into the ovary, make the ovary behave uh, younger. So th this so far to the to the regenerative medicine therapies. Other techniques and procedures is uh, is, is very wide uh, definition. Supplements. Uh, sup in, 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 in in the area of supplements, there is uh, there are some that are interesting. Uh, uh, this started the uh, end of the 90s in uh, Australia with uh, 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 clinical studies using, uh, for example, the human growth hormone that uh, administered uh, uh, concomitantly to the stimulation of the ovaries uh, showed not to improve the number of eggs, but to improve the quality of the eggs. And also, we have uh, uh, published uh, three or four years ago in, in the American Society for Reproductive Medicine a paper where we showed that this is not only the morphological quality which gets improved using this uh, growth of hormone uh, schemes. Uh, this is also the euploidy rate. So you can you can as as, as we have uh, described before. There is a, a, a very precise prediction of how uh, many of the embryos will be aneuploid regarding to age. You can uh, uh, turn down uh, uh, these uh, figures and improve uh, significantly the proportion of viable uh, euploid healthy embryos uh, if using uh, uh, growth hormone in uh, very special cases of advanced age and so on. So this this is something uh, uh, we we have to 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 comment because this is an established uh, uh, 
protocol and there are not only uh, dozens of uh, studies all around the world there are also meta analysis so the evidence on that is uh, quite high uh, and this is routinely uh, uh, used in uh, uh, a lot of clinics uh, regarding regenerative medicine this is much more in a in a initial state of research And thank you again so much for this, um, uh, for answering this question. We have uh, one more coming up here. Can the stimulation protocol affect the quality of all sites? How it can be enhanced? <clears throat> yes, for sure. The protocol stimulation uh, of stimulation can affect the quality of all sites for sure. Uh, not only the drugs that uh, we use, also the timings when we use the drugs, when you start the cycle, when you end and trigger the ovulation. These are all factors that we know that uh, that uh, uh, affect the, the quality of the oocytes. How can this be enhanced? Uh, even uh, making uh, uh, personalized approaches. So the, the, this, there has been uh, uh, decades of of studies and fights between uh, doctors, if they should use agonist, if they should use antagonist, if they should use recombinative uh, gonadotrophins, or if they should use HMG, if they should add LH or not. At the end, everything nonsense, because the aim of these studies was uh, primarily to find the universal formula for everybody. And there is no formula for everybody. What we have is to listen to the nature of each patient, uh, to study the molecular profile if they have uh, some kind of uh, of variants in the in the uh, gonadotrophin receptors that are inborn. This is this is this belongs to the genetic variability of uh, of humans. Then we need to apply different protocols to them, different drugs. Uh, if uh, they uh, share some kind of uh, uh, molecular profile uh, on, on, uh, on, on, on the sugar metabolism, for example, we also know that uh, they would profit from, from uh, uh, very specific approaches. And um, at the end, uh, how we can enhance uh, the quality of the oocytes is uh, taking uh, every patient as a singular one studying uh, uh, their profile uh, individually properly and applying our knowledge of uh, uh, and our experience of uh, uh, what protocols work better for those cases uh, individually and thank you so much so for explaining this uh, stimulation protocols etc as well and now let me go to this question. You already have also mentioned a bit on that, but uh, we have the PGS, PGTA to diagnose embryos before the transfer. Do we have any options to test, diagnose oocytes before the fertilization? Yes, we, we already have uh, 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 comment on, on, on that uh, before in the first question, but uh, Going deeper to, to the detail of, of this question, uh, nothing is so accurate as a, a genetic testing of a, of a cell. But if we assess the, the, the genome, so the, the, the DNA of an oocyte, we can't use it. So we are, we are here at the dilemma uh, of analyzing or using. So we can not do both together. And to di diagnose all sites indirectly will never be so accurate as directly. Uh, having said that, uh, the approaches that we know are even this uh, artificial intelligence, uh, 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 mega uh, uh, pixeled uh, 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 photo data, and the indirect through the follicular fluid and the cumulus cells. There have been also other approaches like uh, using polarized uh, uh, light under the microscope to see the meiotic usus. This is the, the structure in the oocyte that uh, later separates the chromosomes, uh, but none of the findings uh, uh, were uh, predictive and, uh, and uh, significantly predicting the, quality, the genetic quality of the eggs. So this is why in the countries where it is possible, we would 
always prefer to analyze the embryos at a stage where they have 200 cells, picking uh, out only uh, two or three of them, which uh, absolutely does not damage the embryo. And there we have a representative information and a very reliable molecular uh, uh, profile of the whole embryo and uh, ends also of the quality of the egg from which uh, embryo arised. Thank you. And we can uh, go ahead to the next question. There are many patients, 40 plus, still willing to try with their own eggs. What would you advise them? Uh, for sure, there are a, a lot of, of patients. Uh, some of them, they are uh, seeking for the first child. And obviously, what uh, we advise them is to fight uh, for this possibility using all available technology and uh, even from regenerative medicine or, or clinical trials or, or adjuvant uh, therapies or em even embryo banking, or always with uh, 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 genetic analysis because exactly those patients are at a higher risk of having an opioid uh, uh, embryos and uh, we support them uh, uh, strongly uh, uh, for this uh, uh, purpose as long as nature allows us uh, to, to go this way. If uh, beyond 40 and uh, additionally with a low ovarian reserve and a metabolically uh, weaker oocyte quality and even a very low AMH and uh, and so on and so on, then uh, obviously the, 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 the time bomb is ticking down to, to bring their chances in a couple of months or in a couple of years uh, to zero. And uh, it is also wise from, from the side of the, of the uh, physician to advise uh, those patients and to advert them about the, the uh, risks, the clear chances to be to be transparent in in, in communicating uh, the the their chances, in in order to to show them also alternatives like egg donation for those cases where it uh, uh, looks no longer reasonable to fight with all the needs. All right, perfect, thank you. And this is our last common question that has uh, been asked. What about the future? Is there any research being done to have a greater impact on oocyte quality, advanced testing, artificial gametes, cell programming? Yes, uh, for sure. Artificial gametes is something that uh, has already passed uh, many animal models and it uh, looks uh, manageable. Uh, this uh, relies on the technologies like reprogramming stem cells, so which is a little bit uh, difficult. We don't know which uh, effects this could have later on on the on the quality and also on the safety of the pregnancies and uh, on the on the healthy status and the life expectancy of the newborns. So we should take this with uh, conservative calm, yeah, uh, and until until we have no strong evidence that this is safe uh, this is just uh, science uh, fiction but there are there are uh, promising advances i do not expect that they would be ready for for use in humans uh, earlier than in 10 or 20 years yeah but you should know this exists and this will come mm -hmm. uh, this also involves the cell programming uh, in terms of advanced testing and um, what, what looks very promising uh, is, and, and this could be also be managed uh, earlier, uh, is uh, even to know all the metabolic mechanisms that allow uh, an, an oocyte to be mature and to be competent and, um, and to interfere in this process, supporting uh, lack of uh, some molecular pathways that could be impaired and that contribute then to the age related uh, uh, poorer quality of eggs so there there are there are there are some uh, promising approaches how we could how we could interfere in the maturation process 
of of the eggs in vitro yeah this would be like ivm or so-called in vitro maturation you take a piece of the ovaries out to the lab and then you can uh, from the very pre precursor uh, pre antral follicular cells uh, manage the whole maturation process in the lab in vitro taking care of all the steps of maturations that uh, the oocyte need to be competent and to behave younger in a manipulative way yeah this is something that will come um, maybe in the next five to ten years yeah and there has been uh, uh, research that on that since the 90s yeah mm -hmm. and in some cases for example of of extreme uh, pco uh, polycystic ovaries that have uh, strong maturation problems uh, there are already uh, in vitro maturation technologies ready that can uh, make these uh, oocytes mature in the lab better than in the human body and this is uh, quite promising and i think this this will be uh, available very soon and the same now taking big data taking uh, massive sequencing of uh, people into account where we could individualize uh, the medicine we can uh, see which metabolic pathways are stronger or weaker in each person we can also support with nutrients with uh, behavioral uh, recommendations uh, the 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 towards a better life quality and uh, towards improving also the quality of the eggs in a natural way. And thank you so much for uh, tackling all those uh, most common questions. And of course, now it will be time for our uh, patients' questions, okay? So I will be showing them right now, starting with the first one here. Doctor, what do you think about coenzyme Q10 in terms of its quality? Thank you. Yeah. So coenzyme Q10 is, uh, is a very common and uh, well-known antioxidant that uh, interferes in several pathways of, uh, of uh, the uh, protection of uh, many cells and contributes to the, to the balance of oxidants and antioxidants uh, and this is something we usually use also with our patients and we recommend uh, these and other antioxidants uh, in order in order to to have a, a good balance of uh, the oxidative stress on cells but this is nothing that improves the egg quality. This is something that just protects you against uh, against uh, interferences of our lifestyle, like uh, smoking, pollution, uh, bad food, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and uh, a lot of things that uh, contribute to the poisoning of our bodies. And this may protect that, but this is nothing that uh, improves the natural stage of a of a cell. Uh, having said that, this is uh, something we we recommend in most cases. Fantastic! Thank you for your question and uh, helping us out here, uh, Dr. Yon as well. And there is uh, another question about uh, telomere length and oocyte quality. Any comments on that? Yeah. Uh, Telomere length is is related, as you know, to to the uh, life uh, uh, expectations and uh, and uh, lifespan expectations, and uh, it is true and it's surprising that uh, that uh, manipulating the telomere length in animal models and in uh, many cells. Uh, the 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 the, the scientist could uh, enlarge the life expectancy of uh, of cells and organisms which is amazing yeah such such a simple thing uh, could make us live longer okay but this applies for the somatic cells somatic cells are the all cells of the body 
uh, excluding the germinal cells, which are, in case of the females, the oocytes, and in case of the males, the, the sperm cells. There, the telomere length is not so relevant because the major factor for determining the age of uh, the cord of uh, eggs is uh, the first maturation stage of the precursor oocytes, the oogonias, that have uh, two copies of chromosomes before they make the first meiotic division and they uh, start to, 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 to prepare uh, uh, to a chromosomal formula that allows them to get fertilized. And this happens, interestingly, at, uh, at birth. The first uh, reserve of precursor uh, oocytes uh, gets activated very, very early in, uh, in, in our lives. And from then on uh, goes uh, a regular decrease that uh, uh, gets reactivated with the first menstruation again, where uh, a lot of those cells get lost. And then uh, the fertility age of a woman starts. And, and this time is the time that uh, uh, already sets the the uh, weak uh, the weakness of the oocytes to the time exposure and to the risk of an euploidy later so if the question should suggest that uh, enlarging the telomeres of oocytes we could then make behave younger uh, i i have to to, to say that this is probably not uh, uh, what uh, uh, could happen, in my opinion. Yeah? Despite there are, there are other evidences uh, so far and uh, to the state of our knowledge, uh, this could apply to somatic cells that, uh, but would not apply to germinal cells like oocytes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you for your question and your help and advice. And there is actually another question from the very same patient, okay? Uses of DHEA and myoinositol to increase quality of oocyte? Yes. Uh, DHEA um, is a precursor of the growth hormone. Yeah, This is a pro-hormone. So this is, let, let's say, the soft and uh, cheap approach to improving the quality, relying on the capability of the DHA then to activate the, the production of endogenous uh, growth hormone, which is the right path. As I explained before, growth hormone has shown uh, that, uh, that it works. And, um, and with the inositol, uh, it's... Uh, it, it's also a supplement that you can buy in in all pharmacies and in, in drugstores in the United States, uh, and is part of uh, most of the of the uh, compounds of the uh, polyvitaminic and uh, poly supporting compounds that are available. Uh, the same with uh, vitamin D support and uh, so on, antioxidants, the Q10 that was mentioned before. All this stuff um, is okay. I have to admit there is no uh, really serious uh, uh, scientific work that uh, that shows that use universally uh, it helps uh, significantly to improve any uh, parameter. Uh, but uh, the logic behind is sustainable. The damage they produce is insignificant and uh, so far there is no trouble and no fear uh, about uh, using it uh, uh, but there are as i mentioned uh, before much stronger keys to to improve the quality of the eggs than this
Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. There are actually follow up comments from the very same patients. Okay, so please have a look at them. Hyperbaric chamber session is another option, but also super oxide to this sorry, molecules is another option. Any comments on those? Yes, yes, there's um, there are interesting uh, uh, research uh, results. Uh, Concerning the the hyperbaric uh, chamber, uh, also the the use of ozone, also the the, the freezing therapies. There are there are a, a lot of approaches. We are uh, we are expectant uh, regarding uh, the results uh, in uh, in uh, clinical trials that are seriously designed that that really uh, could show that there is um, an evidence uh, for that. Because you can be sure that as long as there is uh, strong uh, uh, evidence on any of these approaches, uh, this will immediately will uh, spread uh, out around the whole world and everybody will use it. Uh, the fact that uh, these approaches are now starting to get uh, checked and contrasted is promising, but to, uh, we should not uh, get too much enthusiastic about yeah until there is no proof of first that they do not damage and second that they really help mm -hmm. fantastic thank you for uh, those comments of course addition to this and uh, your opinion as well and um, there will be another question here um, dear sir please suggest about egg donor age gapping period for egg donation this is all individually uh, very different. So this is a formula where not only the age uh, is is a predominant uh, parameter. There is also the ovarian reserve. There are there are women with 36 that uh, already have absolutely no ovarian reserve, and then they <clears throat> they they should be then orientated to egg donation earlier. And also, it is also a matter of of the wish of the patients. Yeah, some of them have from from cultural or religious point of view uh, uh, troubles in accepting uh, the egg donation as an option. So we have to respect that. Um, and others, even if they have a, a good ovarian reserve, uh, they prefer the short and easier way to a to a to a treatment. Uh, 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 and a success yeah uh, so there is so so min many variability uh, uh, under ivf patients as uh, even under under humans so it's quite difficult to to suggest a, a, a time where where for everybody where this uh, this could be an alternative but so from the from 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 the normal case yeah of uh, uh, knowing the aneuploidy rates, knowing uh, uh, the the diminished ovarian reserve with with age, I think to give a concrete answer to that question, 43 is a very sane age uh, then to to consider seriously the option of egg donation. Thank you for that advice in your question. And we have another one short of this one. Please explain evacuated oocyte quality. Yes. So this is a morphologic uh, parameter of uh, the oocytes, which has a lot of uh, myths around. Um, uh, also, the, not, not only the evacuation, also also the, the, uh, the color and the shape, which can be assessed by by microscopy uh, from a picture of an oocyte, uh, as they were the only parameters we had in the past to, to assess the quality, um, have been uh, strongly related with predictively with the quality of the, these eggs and the results after that. And this is partially true. Evacuated oocyte uh, is is a uh, oocyte that, at least in the in the in the lipid metabolism, is insufficient or incompetent. Yeah, otherwise it would not build such kind of uh, vacuoles. 
and uh, also the pigmentation and uh, many many other uh, parameters could give uh, uh, an impression uh, uh, of of the viability of those oocytes or simply the form yeah some some of the oocytes instead of being completely round are like like uh, uh, larger and uh, like like a pill uh, so this is also known that is associated with much uh, uh, less quality of of the embryos. Uh, so these are all indirect visual parameters that in the history of embryology have helped the embryologist to ascertain if an oocyte is uh, normal or suspicious. But uh, honestly, they couldn't contribute uh, uh, prognostically to, to improve anything because at least at the uh, stage of, uh, of fertilization if they failed to fertilize uh, this evidence is much much more stronger than the appearance of an embryo this is a biological fact this egg couldn't get fertilized so this is a non-competent egg mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you for uh, your opinion and advice on that as well. And we have another interesting question here. How about if an older woman has cytoplasmic IVF using own eggs and the cytoplasma from a younger woman? Ooh, this is uh, forbidden in most of uh, countries because the cytoplasma also has the mitochondria and the mitochondria has also DNA from uh, the donor. So if you create an uh, embryo like uh, this, you would have three genetic instances uh, in, uh, in an embryo. So uh, three genetical parents, which, uh, which is uh, first of all, not regulated in most countries. I think in UK a couple of years ago, there was <clears throat> uh, a, a clinical study or a, a, an exceptional allowness for uh, uh, researching uh, in in this uh, area uh, but uh, i don't know how this ended yeah this was surprisingly for most of all other uh, uh, european clinicians uh, that never could uh, make uh, things uh, like that uh, in our labs so the technology behind that is the same technology as the nuclear transfer that is used for cloning humans now you would understand why this is forbidden uh, and uh, and even having three genetic parts uh, in an embryo this is like a chimera yeah this is like uh, like mixing uh, genomes from different origins so nothing really we should go for i think okay thank you actually there is uh, one more uh, person that actually asked a very similar question but i guess you have answered that yes yeah? so uh, for now at least it's something that is it's not it's mostly forbidden in uh, most of the countries yes yes it's because so safety first yeah mm -hmm. uh, the, the the logic behind is uh, easy to understand yeah in the cytoplasma of of the egg uh, this is this is like a, 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 like a universe this is the most complex uh, cell uh, in the body and if you take all the all all the parts of of uh, of a younger uh, metabolic competent cell into uh, the nucleus or otherwise uh, of an older woman, uh, the, we could expect that all the, the paths, uh, pathways of, of the cell division will be then controlled by the, by the competent and uh, younger components of the cell. So this makes sense. But uh, even the problem is uh, the the mitochondria, yeah, and and possibly the effect while this works is even the mitochondria. The mitochondria are like the energy uh, engines of the cell. If you have, if you are younger, you have 
higher concentration of mitochondria in your cytoplasma. If you are older, you lose it. But there are other approaches that uh, that uh, work on the same aspect, but avoiding the uh, chimerization and avoiding the the, the uh, generation of embryos with three genetic uh, patterns, uh, which is the autologous uh, uh, injection or or accumulation of mitochondria in the in the own. Uh, cytoplasma. This is like an, an, an autologous transplant of enriched uh, mitochondria into into the own cells, which is like an auto transplant, and thereby is ethically absolutely non problematic, and from any other uh, point of view non problematic, uh, which looks also promising. And there are uh, a couple of studies already uh, run that. Uh, showed uh, some promising results. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you for uh, your opinion on this and sharing all the details as well. Let me go straight to our next question. Uh, good evening from Switzerland. Is it true that a very good laboratory makes a huge difference in the, re in the resulting embryos and their quality? I mean the medium culture in which an embryo is helped to grow and develop. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, a very good laboratory makes a huge difference to a only good laboratory. It's possibly not so true. Let's say a very good laboratory and a good laboratory makes a huge difference compared to a average or under average laboratory. Yeah. As as long uh, the, as the as the standards are in the upper half or in the upper third, the differences are not so big. Obviously, uh, the media are are uh, are also industrial products. We 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 with with a couple of uh, providers uh, worldwide. So there is not so much uh, creativity. Uh, 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 left to improve that. Uh, the way of working in a laboratory is essential. The the technology in the laboratory, if they have benchtop uh, uh, incubators, if they have uh, hypoxia in the in the uh, incubation uh, atmosphere, if uh, they have time lapse for all uh, embryos, so they don't need to take them uh, in and out every day to assess them under the microscope. This may contribute much more than the media to the to, to preserving the full potential of each embryo uh, as much untouched as possible. Yeah, keeping the the, the uh, environment uh, so friendly as possible to the embryo. But uh, there is not a super perfect uh, uh, environment that makes. Uh, a weak embryo stronger as it is. So I hope you can understand. So the only thing you can make um, uh, in the in the culti in the culture and in the manipulation of uh, of uh, embryos is uh, making mistakes and damaging them. But you can't do anything to make them better as they are. Fine. This is clear. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much for explaining another question. And let me go to the next one, which is quite a long one. Okay. So please just give it, uh, give me a second. I need to put it right here. Oh, sorry. It was not this one, but let's go to this one and we can, we will go get back to the other one I meant. Hello. I was late. Um, okay. We, I already explained that. So again, sorry. Let's me go to the next question. There are just so many questions that my screen is not showing them properly. <laughs> but here it is the question I meant. How about acupuncture after still miscarriage? I did eight session acupuncture and I noticed a tremendous change in the flow of my menstruation blood and the activity of my ovarian. 
okay acupuncture uh, may help to 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 improve uh, uh, some uh, metabolic balances in the body and to restore uh, some uh, affected uh, paths and uh, i am happy that this uh, um, helped but uh, for sure so, so the reason for miscarriages uh, which is uh, in 80 percent of cases uh, uh, of genetic origin uh, cannot be treated with acupuncture so your well-being can be treated with acupuncture how how you feel and how you process uh, the, the the whole uh, treatment and uh, we are open to acupuncture. We have acupuncturists and, uh, in our clinic and uh, Reiki uh, specialist and uh, yoga and everything, everything fine, as long as this uh, makes you feel better and, uh, and more confident in the treatment and this uh, relieves uh, some uh, pains and tensions. Uh, we are so thankful for having uh, these approaches. But seriously, this will not... Uh, 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 be efficient against uh, uh, miscarriage risk if you have one. And again, thank you so much for commenting on this. And uh, now this is the question I meant, okay, uh, the pr previously. Uh, so I want to do a, a IVF with my own oocytes. How would you proceed in my case? What would you advise to start with if I want to go ahead with my cells? My case, female, 39 AMH last year, April 1.5, slightly overweight for my height, non-smoker, no smoker, no drinker, sorry. My husband, 52, too sporty, not smoking, non drinker. However, diagnosed with varicocele last year. Our story and my story won almost unsuccessful IVF with our own cells. My oocyte and his sperm from this IVF, two embryos resulted 5AB and one graded 3BB. First implantation with 5AB resulted in pregnancy and heartbeat week 5. However, miscarriage week, aspiration, apiration uh, done later, uh, embryo transfer, frozen embryo transfer done with embryo 3BB resulted in viable pregnancy, but no heartbeat. Pregnancy stop week f five to develop still miscarriage followed by aspiration. No PGD was done on the embryos. Me and my husband, however, were tested for over 700 genetic mutations negative no significant a significant significant genetic mutation for us thank you for that question in karyotypes okay i think this exceeds a little bit the the, the shape of uh, our event because this is such a uh, personal uh, and uh, yes case case related uh, question but i can give you uh, three topics yeah on how we would uh, approach that uh, obviously, uh, you have uh, a, a short uh, ovarian reserve, which uh, does not fit so well with the AMH you have uh, reported. Yeah, only only two embryos resulting from a stimulation cycle is uh, difficult to understand in a 39-year-old woman with uh, such an uh, uh, AMH. The only explanation I could find is you have a, a very reduced ovarian volume. Maybe you had uh, uh, surgeries before or uh, some kind of cyst removed or you lost ovarian tissue. Otherwise, this does not fit uh, because I think with uh, this age and this AMH, you should be able to generate at least uh, six to, to eight uh, embryos each uh, run. So this for the first, second uh, with... Uh, the two implantations of the only two generated embryos, these are very good news. You are a good Im uh, implantator, yeah? Uh, all embryos uh, uh, seem to, to successfully be able to implant, which is very good news. Uh, but uh, uh, the reason for miscarrying uh, both is very, very possibly the aneuploidia, so in 80% of, uh, of cases. The, but we would need and we would propose for you in advance to make also an immunological assessment of, uh, of your uh, uh, endometrial tissue in order to go sure that there is uh, not 
also additionally something immunologic going on and uh, the treatment of choice for you would be if we cannot improve your stimulation results go for uh, uh, embryo banking uh, program with pgs with at least uh, uh, two or three uh, stimulation cycles as long uh, as you are younger than 41 and um, if we could achieve uh, higher stimulation results uh, maybe one or two cycles would be enough but uh, anyway with uh, pgd anyway with uh, freezing of the blastocysts anyway with the preparation of uh, immunological rejection risks in advance and with a specific preparation in your endometrium to diminish the uh, risk that these miscarriages uh, uh, happen again. But with PGS, uh, the, the strongest risk would uh, have been definitely been removed. And thank you so much for sharing uh, this, uh, your story, but also for your uh, assistance. And remember that if you wish to be contacted by Dr. Jon and, of course, his team, uh, you can forward, uh, you know, your request to us. We'll be more than happy to forward this uh, so you can have a proper, uh, you know, uh, answer via email, but also I'm sure they will be able to schedule a consultation, right? So uh, thanks again. And. Perfect. Uh, and let me go to the next question right here. What is your opinion on a large age gap between an egg donor and intended father for the resulting health of the embryo, especially autism, as this I've been told relates to father's age and a large age gap? Uh, yeah, there is another option. This is to, to make a, a donation of both gametes. Uh, this is true that uh, increased age of the father is related with not only autism, possibly other epigenetic diseases where we don't have uh, so long records of follow-ups of uh, the quality of life of these newborns uh, uh, across the world uh, the, during the last uh, decades. So there's uh, still a lot of uh, of uh, work and uh, analysis and uh, epidemiologic follow-ups needed in order to assess properly this risk, but there are known. And um, this is then a, a, a question uh, to, to, to give to the, back to the parents. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of cases where, where the, the wife, um, is 40, where the man is 50, uh, where the wife has already uh, diminished ovarian reserve, so they need uh, egg donation. And, uh, and the, the husband says, okay, if we go for egg donation, let's go also for, for sperm donation. Then we make an embryo adoption. Yeah. So as a, as a sign of solidarity, or I don't uh, understand. Uh, what's uh, going on in this, but uh, everything, everything, uh, also a consideration of avoiding risks of uh, epigenetic diseases. If the, if the husband is uh, 60 or 70 is uh, obviously also an alternative. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at the end, the uh, assumption of that risk is something that the patients have to decide. Our, our job is to inform them about those risks and that they can uh, make the decision well informed. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you so much again for this. And let me go to the next question. We will be slowly finishing, but we have a few questions. Uh, so let's get right on it. Hi, I am 39. I have had three FIDA UI and two FIDA IVF treatments where I did not get any day with blastocyst. I used donor sperm, so that was not an issue. Is egg donation my only hope? Uh, it would need to see uh, more the profile of those uh, two failed IVF treatments, where, which protocols, uh, how many cells, uh, why did the, 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 the embryos block the development. Obviously, if using uh, donor sperm, the uh, male factor should be under control. Yeah. 
and then uh, uh, the most reasonable explanation for for that uh, embryos blocking is obviously the uh, oocyte quality so this is exactly what uh, was the topic of of this event yeah um, is there a possibility in uh, women that uh, still have uh, 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 reproductive uh, uh, power uh, to increase the egg quality in terms they can avoid uh, egg donation and i think yes this would for sure need a very serious and deep study of uh, their uh, special case uh, uh, but uh, as we mentioned before there are there are several technologies that are already available uh, with hormones with adjuvant drugs with specific protocols with uh, uh, metabolism adapted protocols with regenerative medicine that uh, that uh, could help exactly in those uh, cases uh, where the egg quality appears to be the the main and crucial factor but uh, even after having checked this in an individual way uh, then the egg donation uh, is for sure also an option and for sure the shorter way and the easier way uh, for a success and this is then a, a decision that has to be taken together in a in an informed and in a transparent way and uh, so this is exactly or, the, or these are exactly the cases where where we see that the, the the advice of the doctor and the orientation of the doctor is crucial So much again for uh, your question and helping us, uh, Dr. Yon. Here's another question: Is it worth transferring mosaic embryos if they are on, the only ones left after PGD? It depends uh, uh, which chromosomes are affected by the mosaicism. If these are chromosomes that uh, uh, are present in a nucleus uh, that are compatible with life. Uh, there is a, a recommendation of the European uh, Society for Genetics not to transfer those embryos. Uh, for all others affecting uh, uh, big embryos that are absolutely non-compatible with life, uh, uh, and or, or mixtures of embryos that are uh, of chromosomes uh, uh, misaligned that uh, are non-compatible with life, uh, then there is nothing to lose transferring them. Yeah? And this is why uh, after the last revision of all the papers published uh, uh, most uh, uh, european and american societies uh, recommended to to open the uh, the the block or to transfer of those embryos and this is uh, routinely done in our clinic for example we transfer those embryos uh, uh, where you only can win, where you cannot lose, because if the mosaicism gets not corrected, if the mosaicism is not an artifact of the uh, technology, if the mosaicism is not relevant because the healthy uh, cells overtake the control, uh, then you will have a, a, a healthy newborn. And if it's otherwise, if the, uh, the mosaic uh, cells are prominent if they take the control over the whole embryo then uh, you will have no implant uh, and that's all so nothing to lose it's the same as transferring embryos without having tested them even with less risk because we would avoid all the or uh, most of the miscarriages and most of the uh, of the newborns with aneuploidias mm -hmm. Fantastic, thank you. There's another question about uh, rejuvenation. So would you recommend ovarian rejuvenation in women over 50 with an AMH and LH of zero to be combined with an egg donor? I don't understand uh, how to combine it with an egg donor, uh, but we usually do not recommend the treatments over 50 years and uh, if it's difficult uh, with ovarian rejuvenation to to have uh, reasonable results in women with uh, 43 and 45 
imagine with 50. So there, I, 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 I don't want to raise unrealistic expectations on anybody. So with 50 years, this is unfortunately beyond the, 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 the reasonable usefulness of these technologies. The only way for such a, a case and after assessing the, the obstetric risks and, uh, and having uh, also the compliance of the patients and the, all the doctors that will that will uh, support the pregnancy, the only way for such a woman uh, is to have access to, to egg donation and, mm -hmm. and not very long. Yeah. So there are clinics like ours that uh, uh, once a patient uh, is already 51, uh, we don't uh, counsel it uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, case, thank yeah. you for clarifying that as well. And there is another question about supplements. So what kind of supplements do we recommend a woman who wants to go ahead with her own cells in IVF treatment before the uh, IVF treatment? Coenzyme Q, myoinositol, or anything else? Uh, vitamin D, um, antioxidants, um, uh, good and healthy lifestyle, uh, healthy nutrition, uh, sports activity, uh, uh, yoga and uh, uh, meditation, uh, why not acupuncture? So there are a lot of things that contribute to, to the well-being. And everything that contributes to the well-being contributes to the to the expectations of a cycle. All right, perfect. And we have uh, another question: What dosage DHEA and coenzyme uh, Q10 is recommended? Also, what other supplements can help for non-PCOS uh, patients? I have mentioned uh, them right now, and uh, the doses of DHEA and Q. Uh, 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 10, I think this is 75 milligrams for the HEA and Q10 uh, uh, 10 uh, per, per day. But this this is not uh, the the question. I think that will uh, uh, move uh, or or improve uh, anything. It's it's more the the more general approach I mentioned in the last answer. Uh, be healthy, enjoy life, and this will help. Thank you for that advice as well. There is another question about spiruline. Uh, how did that woman take it to get pregnant naturally as a very strong antiadoxin? Anti so any comments on that? Yes, again, the same. So th this is why I, I, I usually uh, um, are not against the use of such kind of supplementation. But at this point, where this is the fifth question regarding these supplements, I have to say that I am against taking those supplements as uh, much more important as they really are. So mm -hmm. this is absolutely irrelevant, which kind of antioxidant you take. Uh, and possibly uh, also the doses and possibly also the combination. Uh, if you want to do something to feel better, uh, go to your computer puncturist, go to the, your pharmacist, they will give you a big formula of uh, combining all possible antioxidants that have helped that. But uh, believe me, the, this this will not uh, uh, move your angle so much. Yeah, If you feel better doing this, uh, do that. But uh, this is um, in terms of uh, improving your, your uh, chances not so relevant as uh, many people think. But I understand that uh, it's, uh, the, the human's psychology is, is that easy as everybody is ready to do uh, as much as, as, as it is under their control. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this, is, this, is, this is why I, I support uh, 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 these kind of supplements, uh, as long as they, they have shown uh, not to damage. Yeah? But uh, it's, it's also a, a wrong attitude to take it uh, too much serious. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you again for this. And uh, we have a different question here. Can certain protocols, types of medication used for dosage or the dosage negatively, negatively affect equality? In the States, we seem to focus on quantity, so more medicine is usually used. Uh, yes, this is uh, true. Uh, that uh, protocols and the types of medicines uh, we, we we have discussed this uh, before obviously affect uh, uh, equality because they have to get uh, individualized and uh, and and tailored to to the metabolic uh, shape of each patient and this is usually not done and coming to the second question if uh, higher doses has a negative impact this is a very interesting question because uh, uh, some authors uh, have uh, had a concern that, let's say, overcooking uh, the follicles uh, may induce some kind of of increase of the aneuploidy. Uh, and this and, th and this was uh, believed by all of us uh, for a lot of years, but recent data have shown this is not true. Uh, the aneuploidy rate is given by the uh, quality of the eggs before you start the, the stimulation. Uh, what you uh, can achieve with uh, uh, higher doses is so that this, there is like a seal. Yeah, you you cannot go above uh, a certain a certain uh, 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 activation of uh, follicles. And if you need only 300 and you are giving 450, then possibly these uh, uh, supplementary 150 are not helping and maybe they are contributing to damage. This is true. So the, 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 there is no relation between higher doses and uh, aneuploidy, but there is a relation uh, in higher doses uh, in... Uh, unnecessary cases that could damage metabolically your embryos and for sure they will damage your pocket. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. As I mentioned, uh, we definitely will need to finish uh, very soon, okay? But I guess we can go for the very last question and all the unanswered questions that we will have left. Do not worry. I will forward them all uh, to Dr. Yon and his team. I'm sure they will get back to you. Okay. So let me go to the very uh, last question. Okay. Right now. Um, Dr. Yon. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I had sorry. several operations for your myomas, a five operation. Does this will change the quality of the oocyte? I am 41. Absolutely not. You can be relaxed. Uh, Myomas and um, uh, ovaries and egg quality are absolutely not related. Uh, you may have problems in the implantation. You may have problems in the placentation, in the delivery, in the uh, uh, method. Uh, you may have problems in a, in another sense, but not in uh, in the uh, quality of the eggs. There is absolutely no relation. A complete. I would give a completely different answer if you ask me about uh, endometriomas instead of myomas. Endometriomas or uh, endometriosis is uh, very closely related to uh, an, uh, a huge impairment in the quality of oocytes. Despite of their location, despite of the grade, uh, this is for sure uh, a, a factor that will impair the quality of the oocytes, but not the myomas. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. I just wanted to uh, remind you that uh, right now I am sending a link on in our chat uh, section. Uh, you can use it. And there, if you wish to get in touch with uh, Dr. Yon, you can do it via this website. Uh, so if you have any other requests or, or questions, go ahead and do it now. But also, I just want to remind you that all the questions that hasn't been answered today, uh, I will definitely forward them. So do not worry, they will be answered. Uh, we just simply need to finish for today. Uh, 
uh, but those will be well taken care of. Okay, uh, Dr. Yon, so happy to have you here. It was a great pleasure and thank you for so many uh, detailed information, so many uh, good advices. I'm sure everyone uh, has enjoyed this and uh, were able to find out so much more on that very important topic. And this is like a very uh, long topic that we could discuss even more and yeah, more, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, wow. But uh, as we need to finish, uh, thank you sure. um, so much. I just wanted to show you uh, some shout outs from our patients. As you can see, uh, I'm not the only one who uh, liked the, uh, this webinar. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, very impressive webinar. Thank you so much for uh, for your comments as well. I just wanted Aisha. to remind you that very shortly we are starting our next uh, session, our next uh, online patient meeting. So stay tuned. We are starting starting at 8 p.m. UK time. So as you know, it's like half an hour now. <laughs> so you can join it uh, and, uh, well, one more uh, shout out here, one of the best, and I like the formula with our presentation. Okay, thank you for commenting on that. Happy to to have it. And now, thank you for the opportunity, and thank you also for the good quality of the questions. And I hope uh, uh, some of you could uh, could uh, make uh, uh, take some advantage of of sharing this information. And I am available for 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 next webinars. Uh, uh, this will be announced uh, during this corona uh, time where we are all locked down. Uh, this is a good opportunity to get in touch with patients that way. Yes, and remember actually, uh, Dr. Yon will be with us next week as well. So you can, uh, exactly. So we will definitely, uh, we are in touch and remember we are, this will be also available on our website. I have provided you with the link in our chat section, but you can find all our patient meetings, webinars on myivfanswers.com. Thank you so much. You all have a good evening, Dr. Jan. Thank Bye -bye. you. Have, a, have also a great evening and well, uh, we will see each other next week as well. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.